YouTube superstar Mr. Beast is going to Amazon, the content creator recently striking a deal with Amazon MGM Studios for his first traditional streaming series. For more on what this means for the streaming landscape and maybe if this is a trend to come, we're bringing in Paul Pastor. He's co-founder and chief business officer of Quick Play. Um, and Paul, um, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, just to sort of set the stage here, talk to us about what Quick Play does and sort of, you know, your view on the streaming industry from where you sit. Certainly. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, so Quick Play is an OTT or over the top television uh, service provider. Uh, we support what we call tier one operators, sports, uh, sports rights holders and media groups. Uh, so what does a tier one operator mean? It means somebody who has a very complex ecosystem that's maybe managing uh, legacy systems and legacy business models, as well as current and future ones with streaming. Uh, they happen to have uh, really, um, they want control over their roadmap and they want to make sure that they can, can can respond to the various needs of their consumers. And importantly, they have very big executives who often come in with a, a request or demand that are looking for new features, new innovations that lead the market. Uh, and they're looking for platforms like ourselves to help them drive that, uh, that change in their organization. Um, in terms of the industry, it's an unbelievable time to be involved in the industry. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous amount of change. Uh, I started in the industry when we when cable was being developed, right? And then we had digital terrestrial television that was in the process of transforming the industry. Um, and now most of the business models that I set up maybe 20 years ago have now folded as now streaming becomes the topic du jour. Uh, but there's a tremendous number of trends in the industry at this moment that I'm sure you're seeing. First and foremost, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of focus on cost at this moment. Uh, where streamers are rationalizing their content investment, uh, their marketing investment, and importantly, their technology investment. Uh, second, you've seen a tremendous amount of consolidation in the industry uh, where people are looking to aggregate in order to offer a better value proposition to consumers. And then fundamentally, uh, there is you know, the management of their uh, and focus on profitability as they sunset many of their older businesses that were huge profit drivers uh, and transform these into their new profit drivers. And Paul, this this news, you know, of Mr. Beast um, and, and this deal with Prime Video, is, is that a trend we're, we're seeing, Paul? Sort of the, these big these big names, these big influencers cutting these kind of high profile content deals. Absolutely. Listen, this is a tried and true model, right? Uh, we always in, in Hollywood like to greenlight projects that have big stars attached because it reduces the risk. There's built-in equity with the consumer in terms of how to follow these uh, these stars. So this is a very tried and true model. What Amazon has done in stealing the talent from YouTube or borrowing or leveraging the brand uh, from YouTube into their program with a huge prize, they made a huge splash. But let's not forget that there's other businesses that are out there that are fundamentally pursuing the very same thing, which is how to uh, democratize content through YouTube, like a pocket watch or a moon bug that focus on the kids area, but then build out these incredible franchises that they then, then take to more uh, traditional streaming or traditional media platforms. Uh, another one you saw was Morphe, for example, that was announced this year, uh, coming from YouTube, from Moonbug, that will now be available on Disney and Disney+. Plus. Uh, so this is most certainly a model that Hollywood's familiar with. It presents a great opportunity, obviously, for influencers and those who build their brands in these uh, more democratized platforms uh, to be able to extend that IP, to extend their talents, uh, and really grow uh, a, a, what is a, you know, basically production company and franchise business uh, through these other various platforms. I, I am curious, Paul, what the, what the ROI is on something like this, right? Because just to give a, you know, anecdotal example, my kids are Mr. Beast fans. Um, they watch him on YouTube. I don't know if they're going to be interested to watch this show on Amazon. So I just wonder what kind of migration or, you know, if not migration, sharing Amazon is going to get from this? What kind of incremental increase in subscribers? What do you think? Uh, certainly. Well, first of all, I think you started with what is the RI for the consumer, uh, which I think is a really important piece. Uh, and Amazon made a big splash with saying they're going to offer the largest cash prize at $5 million. So that has that's going to hopefully draw in some of the talent. But most certainly, they're going to have to figure out how to translate what has been a more of a short form uh, format into a longer term, for, uh, a longer uh, format. They may have multiple episodes that can really drive fan engagement all across the uh, the platform. The second piece from an Amazon perspective, right? 
Um, Amazon always has a very different model. They uh, monetize us through uh, any number of different ways in which they grab the stickiness of us from uh, whether that is our shopping habits, whether that is subscribing to Prime and others. I'm sure sitting behind it, they're thinking about how do we grow our share of eyeballs? How do we then think about, uh, as they've expanded into ad sales, how to monetize that through ad sales? And then what are the other touch points we have with consumers where we can drive increased spend and attention uh, to ultimately drive back that ROI? And Paul, last question here, you know, we, we talk about Mr. Beast, but there, there's not many Mr. Beasts out there, right? Pretty, pretty unique guy in terms of just superstar power, Paul. For relatively, let's say, you know, smaller um, influences, influencers, are there also opportunities, Paul, to cut similar kind of content deals? Uh, most certainly. I mean, we see this all the time in commercials, right? Uh, that they will find lower, uh, maybe Tally doesn't have 250 million followers like we've seen in Mr. Beast, uh, to be able to develop brand affinities and help sell across their brands. We also see new services like passes.com uh, uh, developed by Lucy Gao, who is, who's fundamentally trying to figure out how do we actually take influencers and fundamentally help them build bigger businesses, bigger presences, and professionalize what they do. So there, I think this is a trend you're going to continue to see. It's like I said, it's a model that Hollywood loves, which is understanding talent, how to leverage the ecosystem to draw the attention around their uh, their IP, around their new show, uh, how to leverage the entire uh, cacophony of noise right around the opportunity and drive marketing and, and, and viewership into their platform. Paul, thanks so much for joining the show today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.